Nicole Flanagan here. Today is February 21st, 2018, and I'm headed off to do my 2018 solo snowboarding trip. Um, I did have to split this trip up into two parts because of work. They wouldn't let me have that much time off in one whack. Um, but either way, I'm very blessed to have gotten this much time off. Uh, it's a lot. I think three weeks total. Three weeks and three days, something like that. I've already done the first part and I went up to Canada and I did Red, Fernie, Kimberly, and Castle, and then I came back home. Um, but this trip, the part two here, I am headed back up to Canada for some more snowboarding. So the first stop that I have planned is up in Banff, Alberta, and I'm gonna be snowboarding the local slopes there for a few days. Um, and after that, I'm gonna board my way all the way over to the west coast and hit up Whistler for a few days. That's the main event, and I am beyond excited for that one. It's gonna be incredible. And then after Whistler, I'm gonna be dropping back down into the US, into Washington, and I'm gonna be doing three mountains there before driving east back home to Montana. This morning is when I left home, and I'm driving all the way up to Banff. Uh, it's about an 11 and a half hour drive. I'm almost there. Um, I should be there around four. It's coming up pretty close here. I hope I do not bore you to death with my vlog, but I'm just gonna put in things that kinda pertain to what interests me and kinda just keep my memory this way. It's gonna be fun. Hey all, I just got off work a couple hours ago. I've showered and gotten all loaded up to finally embark on my 2018 January solo snowboarding trip. I'm stoked to say the very least. Destination is Canada with those bad boys. Tana. Oh, thank you for the ice. It's so nice of you. What? And, and uh, uh, that was cold. Thank you for dropping it in my crotch. But watch the edge. You big baby. I just stopped at Buffalo Wild Wings to eat for the first time in like days. Got to see my sister and little baby Tana. This guy has problems. Major, major problems. A snowboard bum if cops think that you're hot boxing when all you're really doing is just trying to get some sleep 600 miles away from home in a Walmart parking lot here we have what we would call a thrift shop and a thrift shop a First impression of Schweitzer, Idaho. I can't see like a blasted thing. I'm on some kind of really steep run. 
no one's here. It's super foggy and I can't see anything. You know, I'm just riding Schweitzer with all of my friends on this six person chair. <laughs> all right, so it's cold. I've been outside all day long. The only time I have gone inside is to use the restroom once. I should drink something. And I definitely, I definitely should eat something. Because the last thing I ate was Buffalo Wild Wings yesterday for lunch with my sister. But this snow is amazing. It's, um, look at it! Amazing! I'm driving through here and all the signs I'm seeing say like kilometers an hour instead of miles an hour. It's pretty awesome. I wish we used the metric system. It's so much better than the Imperial. Oh my goodness, civilization. You guys, I got to Canada and I have been driving uphill since. In a moment, you cry. Cold in the green, death stinging pain. You fall like hell, keep the wolves away. Yes. I'm a, almost to a line though. It's right there. Dude, civilization. Bye. <laughs> All right, so I'm leaving Rossland, British Columbia. Gotta walk to my truck. I get to walk through these things to get to my truck. Yeah. That's some serious snow removal. So, 
this is like one of the most beautiful drives I've ever been on. Um, it's like so pretty. Oh my gosh. I could just drive this for a living and I would be happy. So I totally just saved this kid's life. He was like seven or eight years old probably. So I'm riding through the trees and there's like one trail you can take. So I'm going pretty fast and I come across him and his legs are all twisted. He's skiing. He's still in his skis. So he asked me to like unhook him from his skis. Um, so I did and turns out he had a sprained ankle so he couldn't walk. So I had to carry him out of the woods. And then I had a skier who was going by to help me um, take him down the mountain. It's pretty crazy. While I was out snowboarding, this is how much snow we got. It's beautiful. So I'm walking to a place called the Royal and check this out. This is not a snowboard, it's where adults will pull their kids on sleds to get around. It's adorable. Yeah, no, it hurts. Um, I got it on video too. I just like slammed my face on the snow. It was the stupidest mistake too, I tell you. Such a rookie move, I just wasn't paying attention. And the snow was so heavy. Couldn't control myself. just crossed the border into the USA. There's a bunch of bighorn sheep. Welcome back to the US, Ire. Montana, baby. Woo!
All right, so I just stopped to get some fuel and I noticed that sadly all of the snow that had accumulated in the back of my pickup bed has melted. Um, it was completely full from Canada. And I just looked in the back and some Canadians must have like thrown some beer cans in there. I look like an alcoholic now. Arms at the side. Do not trust any child to choose bubblegum flavored bubblegum. Do not trust any adult to choose gum at all. Never vacation in bed. So this is the view I had growing up. That's the Beartooth Mountain Range. It's my parents' driveway where they have shoveled all of this snow. And those are my brother's puppies. Where's Tank? There he is. And my sister's dog. The Huskies, my sisters. And this is the house I grew up in um, when we built it when I was 12. Hey puppers. Hey Ford. Continuing on with my road trip to Canada. I left this morning at about 3 a.m. and I'm headed straight up to Banff, Alberta. I have about nine hours left if the roads keep cooperating like this and stay nice and dry. We have some wheat Montana action going on. Have to stop here. It's a necessity. All right, Montana and the U.S. We'll see you in a while. Here we go, Canada. Welcome to Alberta. I'm in Canada, you guys. Woohoo! I'm driving through Calgary and I totally notice like a little ski hill in the middle of Calgary. That's so cool. Um, that city was a total nightmare to drive through, by the way. So this place is called Hoodoo's. That guy had to check my ID. It's kind of super dingy. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die down here. Okay, I was just gonna 
I'm in this parking garage and I want to know how this guy right here got into the spot. How? How did he park right there? How? <laughs> Is this not the bridge from hell? Like, what is this joke? Death and dismemberment waiting to happen. That's what that is. Yeah, this is literally absurd, but it is so cool. How can you have so much snow?
up here at Revy, um, Revelstoke, on the back side of the mountain. Um, the lift comes up over that peak there. I did take this run, so I got off the lift somewhere around there, kind of cut across that open space there, and then cut down that run, and then went through all these trees to the bottom of this lift. Yeah, it was snowing pretty good at base. I didn't really show you the massive snowstorm right there, but yeah. Um, what? Why are there horses next to the ski lift? What is this, a farm? You were so right, man. Horse butt. Kombucha mushrooms. Yeah. All right, so I'm at the top of Blackcomb Mountain at Whistler, and I just rode down Blackcomb Peak. I went down that chute right there and then traversed over to where I'm at now. I think that's how they do it. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Yeah, me neither. I never rode pipes. Cody grew up here and I put a red pipe. What? Yeah, I'm pipe shot, man. Oh. Yeah, Cody. That was good. Good morning everyone. I'm up here at Whistler still, which is not a bad thing. I'm gearing up for day two of shredding, and it did snow last night. Gonna go get this Nar Pow Yo. This is what a powder day on a Thursday at Whistler Blackcomb looks like in the first 15 minutes of opening. <clears throat> it's a little bit painful to see. That's one way to do it. Uh, he uh, doesn't have the right skis. Well, he's also relatively new skier. So, his traditional method of skiing is Oh.
powder? Yeah. Yeah. For your whole life. Seriously. Yeah. This is my favorite part right here. I've already done the GoPro. It's phone time. <laughs> That's so rad. Most of our GoPro footage is sitting and talking about where we're going next. <laughs> What's up? I'm on the Poma lift to the top. I rode all that earlier. I don't know what you can see. I can't tell. It's too flat light out here. And I don't know if these goggles are a good idea for today, but hey, they're working. Yeah. my GPS said that I'll arrive like I don't know 10 minutes later than when I was supposed to because traffic was getting worse yeah look layers upon layers upon layers yeah where's he think he's going he's leaving the snow why would you ever do such a freaking thing big mistake bro they were kind enough to dig out the speed sign maximum 60 kilometers an hour what is the deal with this? And friend, and we went up there and then we camped overnight on a cliff. It was a good time. Yeah! <laughs> this park is so cool. Do it up, do it up. Anyone can hit it now, huh? Hit that. It's like a skate park. Yeah. So rad. Do something cool, I want to see it. Send it! You're not going to do anything cool. Wait, that guy is. Those guys were born uncool. Oh, yeah. Good job, friend. Cool. Good job, Lucy. Hey, we can just jump here. Look at how low we are. You guys good? Yep. We close enough? Coat, <laughs> coat ladder. So I just got off the lift, my first chairlift ride at Cyprus, near Vancouver. 
All right, here's one side of Cyprus um, with the ocean in the back. Here's some more, like this cool bay area. I don't know what it's called, but I need to find out. That's cool. Raising Canadians properly. So I'm in Whistler. I just woke up. I slept in the parking lot last night. And there's just a coyote. A broken leg or something. I think he's looking for food in the parking lot. Poor little guy. Weird. So I'm getting ready to cross the border back into America from Canada. Had an amazing time up here. Amazing time. <sighs> I don't really want to leave Canada, but okay. All right, here we go. Woohoo, I'm a free woman. Again, back in America. Now we know why all the snowboards are just sitting there. Because they are beginners. What was that called? Proper I think it's promenade or something. Promenade. Whew. I'm going on to 
to the interstate thing here and there's a stoplight that stops every car and lets one in to the interstate at a time. So I'm getting closer to the stoplight and I see this homeless guy, kind of young, probably my age, um, with a sign that says, trying to survive anything helps. So I'm getting closer and I'm like a car away from the stoplight and I rolled my window down and I was like, I don't have any cash, I'm really sorry. And he's like, that's okay. And I was like, I have granola bars, but that's up to you if you want them. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take some. I'm hungry. I'm like, okay. So I hand him some granola bars. He's like, thank you. And like, he goes back to his spot. And so I move a car forward and I stop at the stoplight there, waiting my turn to get on the interstate. And he turns back around and he yells at me. He's like, by the way, girl, you are hot as fuck. And I'm like, thanks. I obviously, obviously have to get ice cream. That's not ice cream. Yes. Seattle, got graffiti, mountains, ferries, the ocean, a jet boat, or something. Got that Ferris wheel, the famous one. Mass amounts of traffic, pollution, skyscrapers, tourists. Tiny little bit of green because Washington's all green. And a little bit of America. And that's about what wraps Seattle up. Oh, and um, homeless people. I will not set foot within like a thousand feet of that stupid gum wall. Ew to the max. Gross. It's called the disease wall. I'm within a thousand feet, so gross. And no, I'm not gonna contribute to this madness. I don't know what he's making, but get in my belly. Alright, so I just left Snohomish, Washington. I'm driving the last 840 miles to home. It's supposed to take about 14, 15 hours. But I might stop in view on the way home and stay the night with my sister and then just drive like the last four and a half hours home tomorrow. Kind of break it up. We'll see how tired I am later here at 9 p.m. This trip I've already traveled 2,300 miles 
840 left and then I'll be done. These, uh, these snow plows here mean serious business about not letting anybody pass. You're hogging up all the lanes here, yo. And like, you don't want to squeeze in between them when you have a split second chance. But, I guess gotta let the workers work, yo. Yeah, they got their external blades out. Where do you think you're going? I uh, <laughs> hate to break it to you, but you're not very swift. You're holding up the line, yo. Move! Look, I'm home. Montana, yay! Still like eight hours from home. You say more? Can you just throw my phone? Yeah. Tana. Do you want to live there? Can you say more? I'm not giving over there. I'm not giving. I'm not giving. Mama? There you go. Say thank you. Mama. Not that tiara off your head. It's Dash and Wayne as God's fault. You cannot stop right in the rock. Why fight it? Because. That's kind of a weird spot to hang, chill. Could she possibly be ready for bed? Here, Tana, why don't you get up here and cut over again? Oh, you just slammed my finger in the book. <laughs> Where's the doggy? Hey, Tana Bear, I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye, Tana.